All right, so now we also need to talk about a different type of translation. This time we're going to call it on the T axis. So instead of plugging in on the S axis, it was S as S goes to A. This time our plug in is going to be on the F of T piece of this, okay? So we could use a piecewise function um, and we could use the formal definition, but really we use this unit step function in order to write f of t in a condensed form. So if I were to write this as my piecewise function um, to model these breaks in domains, you could then see that a graph of that would be this down here. Um, so we're at two, and then I need to have an output of negative one and so because of that, I would need to then subtract 3, and that applies after t equals 2. And then if I want to move this back up, boop, there, then you apply that after t equals 3. And so that's why this function looks like this here. And um, there's a couple other examples of how to, in general, write these piecewise functions um, with regards to like writing them in the unit step function. So if I have um, g of t from a certain time interval, then I'm like, okay, good, f of t equals g of t here, we're good to go. And then I need it to equal a different function. So I need to take out that function and then add in the other function on t equals a. Um, another way you could say this is you could add h of t minus g of t and then apply that step function, similar to what kind of happened here. If you want to look at that and pause and see if you can make the connection between these two. All right, but let's talk about Laplace. So the second translation theorem says that if we know big F is the Laplace of little f, okay, and we're looking at a greater than zero, then this must also be true. So let's apply that to this function here and find that Laplace transform. So the Laplace of f of t, that's the Laplace of 2 minus u times, minus 3, excuse me, times u of t minus 2 plus u of t minus 3. All right, well, I'm going to split these up into each little piece here. So I'm going to say, okay, well, what's the Laplace of 2? Well, that's just 2 over s. And then negative 3 times the Laplace of u of t minus a, or in this case is t minus 2. Well, then I would have a 1 in here, 1 times this. So I'm going to have negative 3 times 1 over s times e to the t negative 2s. Because in this case, a is 2. All right, let's do this for the last one then. So again, that's 1 times this. So I'm going to have 1 over s times e to the negative times e to the negative 3s. So the Laplace must be equal to 2 over s minus 3 over s e to the negative 2s plus 1 over s e to the negative 3s. All right, there's also a couple different inverse things that we need to go over as well. So again, if little f is the inverse Laplace, of big F, 
then this must be true, just undoing what we did. But very rarely do we kind of see it in, in this form here. More than likely, you're going to need to apply this piece of it. Or when I go to undo this piece here, we need to translate that back over to this side here. So let's do an example where we need to do this. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is write f of t in my unit function, my unit step function form. And so I need this to be zero, between zero and pi, plus I need this to be three cosine t after pi. All right, so now I need to take the Laplace of all of these things. So I'm going to take the left-hand side first, s times big Y minus Y of zero is five, plus the Laplace of little y is just big Y. And then I need to apply this piece right here. So G of T, okay, is then going to be, I don't have to worry about this zero. So this three is just gonna pull out to the front. This is my G of T, right? And then this is my, where A equals pi. So this says to do what? It says to do three E to the negative pi S. And then I need to take the Laplace of G of T plus pi. So the cosine of t plus pi is what I need to take the Laplace of on the inside. Now we don't know how to take the Laplace of like composite pieces, but remember your cosine function has a period of two pi. So if I just add this over, let's see, it actually would go this way. Um, it's gonna look a little something like that. Well, what ends up happening is that this is the same as negative cosine t. So I'm going to have everything on my left-hand side. Let's just leave it for now. I'm going to have negative 3 e to the negative pi s, and then I can take the Laplace of cosine t, which ends up being s over s squared plus 1. Okay, so that's a trig identity kind of trick there so that I can take the Laplace of that. All right, I have m y s plus 1 on my left hand side and then I have negative 3 e to the negative pi s s over s squared plus 1 and then I'm going to add 5 over to this side here. All right, I'm going to go ahead and leave these as separate pieces and have 5 over s plus 1, just because it's positive, I'm going to pull that to the front. And then I'm going to have 3 e to the negative pi s all over s plus 1 times s squared plus 1 here in the bottom. Now let's do some partial fraction decomposition. Just on this piece here. So I have a over s plus one and b s plus c over s squared plus one. So s equals a times s squared plus one plus b s plus c times s plus one. And I end up getting after all of this algebraic manipulation, 
that a is equal to one half, b is equal to negative one half, and c is also equal to negative one half. Okay, so there is some algebraic manipulation you need to do over here um, in order to, to solve for all of these, okay? Okay, so then let's go ahead and I'm going to take out here a negative 3 halves e to the negative pi s of all of that because there's a halves over all of this. And I end up getting negative 1 over s plus 1 minus, well, no, it's took out the minus, so s over s squared plus 1 and 1 over s squared plus 1. And let's specifically just look at this piece here. So if I have e to the negative a s and then a function, how do I undo that? e to the negative a s times that function means that you do a little f, so you just take the inverse of that function, plug in t minus a, and then you need to make sure that you apply that only on that specific interval. So all of these are going to end up having this specific interval being applied to it. Um, let's go ahead and do this first one. So that's going to be 5e e to the negative t. Okay, and then I know that all of these are going to be under that step function. Okay, this is going to be um, a negative 1, and then this is an e function, e, to the, and that would normally be negative 1, but I need to plug in for t, t minus pi. And then I have a sine and I have a cosine, cosine, of t minus pi sine of t minus pi. Now we could do some um, periodic function things here, like this is negative cosine of t. Again, uh, what's sine? If I move that over, yeah, minus sine of t. You could do that if you if you wanted to, um, and kind of manipulate those two pieces so that they're not in that t minus pi piece. Um, or we can also write this in um, piecewise. So this would be from 0 less than or equal to t less than pi. And then this whole thing here, da 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 would go here for t greater than or equal to pi. Okay, and so that's what this piece here means, is that this um, ends up being a piecewise function as a solution um, because it has those translation pieces um, on our t-axis is the one that's going to end up getting that applied to it. 